Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Today's meant to be the warmest day of the year. Currently filming, it's the end of March. Um, could get up to 19 degrees Celsius. So that's gonna make a nice change and a nice difference. One of the biggest things that people very often ask about when it comes to growing food is what do we do in shady corners? So this here may not look it, but it's actually the shadiest part of the garden because once those trees behind me come into full leaf, uh, by now, this will be in shade. So I want to show you seven crops that are perfect for growing in shade, as well as some other ways that you can use shady corners to increase the productivity of your garden. In front of me here, I've got the main shady area of the garden. A lot of it is almost in direct shade. Uh, like these red currants here, which we still get harvest from. And that's one of the most important things that I want you to get from this video. Um, I think you should take all the advice regarding growing food in shade with a pinch of salt. Uh, if you look online, you kind of get this perception that there's only a very limited range of crops, which usually ends up being leafy greens, that you can grow in partial shade and nothing should be grown in full shade. Now, my experience is I get really good crops and some surprising things in kind of full or partial shade. So I get amazing Jerusalem artichoke harvest in this bed. Even here, you can see in the footage, I'm actually directly above sycamore trees. Now they block out a lot of light, still getting harvest. So the only thing that I want you to really, if there's one thing to take away, is to understand that there's so much more potential in growing food in shady areas than we first thought. And even though the harvest might not be as high, you can still produce food. And I think that's something that is really exciting. One thing that I think we can all benefit from doing is a little bit more experimentation. So this growing season, try growing a wide variety of crops in your shadiest corners of the garden. And you might be pleasantly surprised with the harvest that you get. What I want to do is get the most obvious one out of the way. And there are two groups of crops that will come under leafy greens. The first group is lettuce and mustard, and the second group is kind of chard and spinach. Now, these are super easy. They absolutely thrive in partial shade. Now, in terms of a strategy, if you only have a small garden, you should prioritize growing those kind of salad type crops in your shady area to free up space in the sunnier parts of your garden to grow more sun loving crops, for example, peas. These are so easy to grow, you can either start them off in modules or more easily, uh, you can start them off directly and they're so simple, so productive, but you don't need much space to grow a lot of them. The next group of crops is actually a lot of the perennial herbs. I've got two here which have self-sown and these are growing underneath this bush in kind of full uh, shade. This is chives and then I've got some lemon balm. So I'm going to try to lift this chive plant out, if it will come out, and transplant it up in the garden. I just gotta do it super carefully. There we go, it's coming out now. I'll then take this up and transplant it in a shady area of the garden. Here's a clump of chives, it smells absolutely amazing. I could divide these, but I'm gonna grow them all together so it can develop into a bigger plant sooner. I'm trying to grow as many herbs as possible this year and I'll explain why in a future video. Um, but right now I'm just gonna plant these. These are in the shade of the solar tunnel. So I'll just make a, a nice hole there, put these in. And then I've got some more chives as well as some mint. Mint is another fantastic a crop that you can grow in the shade uh, further down in the shady corner of the garden. So here I've got some mint and some chives that I'm gonna put within quite close proximity. And the next group, so the fourth group uh, or crop group uh, that you can also grow really effectively in partial shade are gonna be some of your annual herbs. So parsley, I always grow in shade so usually it's within the shade of some plants be it 
under some things like runner beans or in small gaps surrounded by bigger things like broad beans or potatoes. They seem to do really well there. And also coriander. And what this means is you're also going to extend their cropping season because with things, especially like coriander, they can so easily run to seed. So all you're going to do is make sure that you get a prolonged harvest from those. The next crop is quite a famous crop. <laughs> That's going to be your sun chokes, aka true somata chokes. These are growing in this bottom section. I usually grow two or three rows. I space rows about 30 centimetres or a foot apart and the same distance between each tuber. The only way I can properly grow this is if I actually use a fork and go through all the soil and then give it a really deep mulch um, every single year because you can easily miss out these tubers. They basically, they're sprouting now, but they basically look like clumps of soil. Um, but these have been grown here for 15 years, consistent results. You can grow them in big containers as well in your shady areas. And it's just really nice to have a crop uh, that you can grow in a shady area that's gonna give you harvest all through winter. Another crop is rhubarb. I'm actually gonna show you this patch rather than the same patch twice. And look at this, absolutely amazing. These rhubarb were actually grown from seed. So you can start rhubarb from seed. And they just take a bit more time to develop, um, but they taste absolutely amazing. A brilliant crop during the hungry gap and they work really well in shade. In fact, shade is almost a way of uh, forcing rhubarb um, and they still grow amazingly. The rhubarb patch up in the main garden has been going for a good 15 years. Now, if you want to try something different in a shady area, I recommend actually growing broad beans and peas for shoots. Not for the pods, but for the shoots. They're so easy, you can grow them really close together. They work really well in shady areas. And it means that you have a different kind of harvest. So it's always nice to have a diversity of different types of things that you can chuck into salads, use as sides, chuck into main meals, uh, and broad bean and pea shoots really work well for that purpose. There are three other things that you can do with your shady areas, which are particularly suited if you have a smaller space to grow. The first thing is probably the most important and that's a place to produce compost. The other side of the trellis is south facing. So when everything leaves up, this actually becomes quite shady. So this is a fantastic area to put your compost bins because it's not prime crop growing conditions. So what you can do instead is grow and produce amendments that you can place onto your soil to make your soil healthier. Another use for shady areas is especially if you have a roof or a collection point for rainwater or any other kind of water, then is a perfect place to put in water storage. The great thing about shady areas is that it keeps it cool. It's quite a warm day today, but I'm feeling this barrel is so cool. Um, it is really nice and it maintains the, the quality of the water. Another fantastic use of shade is if you have the space and the interest, you may want to highly consider keeping some poultry in your garden. So things like chickens, ducks, quail, they are brilliant to have. Not only are they going to be a fun companion as you're growing, they also help close the nutrient cycle because as Adam from Adam and Arth suggests, and I honestly believe this as well. Chickens are just the best composters. So by having that closed nutrient cycle within your garden, you're making your garden more sustainable and resilient as a result. So those are just some simple ideas and also some crops that you can use and grow to really make the most of your shaded areas. I really hope you found this interesting. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them down below in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you again soon next week.